20,000 feet. The supercharger just changed over in a high blower. A jump seems to occur in the engine, then the manifold pressure returns to its original setting. It switches at an altitude of between 20,000 and 20,500 feet. Heading on upstairs. Twenty-five thousand feet. I've leveled off. Hello, children. Hello. How is she on directional trim changes when speed and horsepower are varied? I'll throttle back and give it a whirl. The airplane is stable at all normal loadings, but the directional trim changes at low speeds as horsepower and speed is varied. However, the rudder tap corrects this effectively with only a slight adjustment, and it should be used as necessary. Normally, there is no trouble as the plane is naturally stable. That means the P-51B will remain at any altitude without adjusting the trim tabs. Let's work for the pilot. Now, I'm going to show her stalling characteristics. The stall is comparatively mild and occurs at approximately 95 miles per hour indicated with gear and flaps up. About three or four miles above this stalling speed, a slight elevator buffet occurs. Plane sinks at distance. Then rolls over on one wing. It doesn't whip over as some other planes do and has very little tendency to drop into a spin. The recovery is completely normal. All that has to be done is to release the back pressure on the stick and apply opposite rudder. With the gear and flaps down, the stall would have the same characteristics as before. Only it occurs at about 85 miles per hour indicated. Uh, naturally, with combat tanks or bombs making an extra load, the stalling speeds are higher. I'll run into an accelerator stall. A heavy buffet occurs around the wing root fillet and the horizontal stabilizer three or four miles per hour above actual stalling speed. But the plane recovers immediately by releasing pressure on the stick. The accelerator stall has stronger warning characteristics than a normal stall. Hello, Bob. Show us a couple of dives. Okay, Colonel. Here she goes. Plane gains speed extremely fast in a dive. Tends to veer slightly to the right and continue in a dive without pulling itself out for quite a long time. The propeller doesn't overrun during the dive, does it? Not a bit. I put it at 3,000 RPM and it stayed nailed there. Any other questions, sir? No, thanks. How about doing a couple of rolls for us? Here's one to the left. Rate of roll is extremely fast, especially at high speeds. That's due to the sealed balance aileron. It's the final result of 14 different designs. That fast roll really counts, too. Yes, that means the pilot can disengage the enemy a lot quicker. We believe the only enemy ship that can approach it for speed of roll is a Fokker Wolf 190. Here's another dive. In the dive, the pilot doesn't have to maintain excessive forward pressure on the stick. Catch the slight tendency to veer to the right with a trim tab, if in a prolonged dive. Otherwise, the ship is positively stable in the dive. Hello, Arthur. I'm going up to high altitude and put her in a maximum speed dive to show you how fast you'll go before reaching compressibility. Okay, Bob. Let us know when you're up there. Roger. Roger. Now then, while Bob's climbing, there are some points that might interest you, gentlemen. Let's sit down, shall we? Colonel? Thank you. Uh, as you know, the true speed of a plane at the time compressibility occurs divided by the speed of sound at that altitude gives us a figure called the Mach number. So named after the man who discovered the relationship. Let's take an example. We'll say the plane reached compressibility at 560 miles per hour. That's true airspeed at 10,000 feet altitude. Dividing this speed by 724, the speed of sound at 10,000 feet, we get and gentlemen, we've done this arithmetic many times before. 0.76, the Mach number. Now that number indicates the speed a plane can dive at any given altitude. The higher the Mach number, the faster the plane can dive without encountering compressibility trouble. We believe the P-51B has the highest Mach number of any fighter. Now there's a point I'd like to make to pilots about getting into compressibility, but first a little more dope. The Mach number 
of any given ship remains the same no matter what the altitude. But the speed of sound decreases at high altitudes. So, the higher the altitude, the less speed required to get into compressibility. Let's get back to our problem. Suppose we were at 30,000 feet. Then x, the speed we could go, divided by the decreased speed of sound at that altitude, 680 miles per hour, equals the Mach number, 0.76. Solving, we find that we could go only 517 miles per hour before getting compressibility. One more thing. The higher the altitude, the faster the true speed for any given indicated speed, and as I said, the lower true speed required to reach compressibility. So here's the point, and it's an important one. The pilot should remember that at high altitudes, he reaches compressibility at much lower indicated speeds than at low altitudes. At any rate, observe the speed limitations posted in the cockpit. 38,000. Are you all set down there? there? I guess we're all set. We had enough theory for the moment, anyhow. Major, should we let them know we're still down here? Right. Hello, Bob. We're all set down here. You're really going to wind her up for us? Just you. Hold on to your hat, Major. Okay. Give us your indicated speed and how she acts when you get her into compressibility, will you? Roger. I'll, I'll be, be down, down in a minute. minute. Three hundred. Three fifty. Four hundred. Four forty. Compressibility. Stick moving four and a half. Slight elevator overbalance. Heavy, Heavy buffeting, buffeting on, on tail, tail section. section. Oscillation occurs rapidly. However, control forces on elevators remain unchanged. Plane hunts slightly along horizontal axis. Pulling out now. Difficulty, except buffeting continues until a lower speed has been reached. 440 indicated at that height. That's really moving. Enemy fighters will have a hell of a time trying to keep up with this ship in a the dive. They really would, Colonel. I'm going to try a couple of spins. 